All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another video. Today, we are going to be doing something new, something even new in the reaction video area of my channel. We are going to be watching a death bow. So, for the people who don't know what this is, this is basically where two or more people from pop culture fight to the death. Um, there's two pe people named Wiz and Boomstick who analyze people's weapons, armor, and abilities and stuff. And today, I've been excited for this one. I, I did a reaction video of this before, and it did not work since it got blocked. So hopefully this one doesn't, because now I have my face cam. So today, we'll be doing Oria and Asta. They're both from anime. Oria is from My Hero Academia, and Asta is from Black Clover. So let's get to it. Oh, wait. I gotta change it to something more comfortable first. Like my jacket? You think it's cool? You got my hero academia. Get into it now. Hopefully. I, my mic doesn't go out since that happened last episode and I had to play again, so hopefully it's good. All right, let's get into it. And hopefully Midoriya wins since I don't watch Black Clover. Well, I've heard a lot of people are thinking that Austin's going to win, but hopefully they get proven wrong. Since this is only like three hours after uh, the fight air. So anyway, let's get into it. All right, let's get into it. All right, let's see. Is my mic working? I don't know, since I might have to do this again. Deku, my hero academia super student, straight out of UA High. Go Deku. Magical ass kicker from Black Clover. Though you may be born bereft of the same gifts as your peers, there is. I want to see if this is recording. Uh. As long as you're a okay, it's recording. Okay. And it's our job to analyze their weapons. Up, who would win a death battle? I'll be checking often because uh, I want to see if my mic and uh, audio is working. So I'll just be checking in and out of this. Number one ranked superhero in Japan, All Might. Too bad he was born a freak with no powers. You heard right. This is like a reverse X Men thing where 80% of the population gets red superpowers, or quirks as they're called, while the remaining fifth are stuck as basic bitches, or as his spiky haired bully Bakugo called him, Deku. Deku, That's yeah, huh? The Japanese word Sanobu, meaning good for nothing. Persevering despite his basic bitchedness, Midoriya got the chance to prove his quirkless heroic metal against this giant slug monster. Much the surprise of one particular almighty onlooker. His body secretly decaying from a horrific injury, All Might needed to find the one who would inherit his all-powerful quirk. And All Might didn't want just anybody. The hero world was filled with glory seekers in it for fame and money. All Might wanted someone whose body moved on its own to save someone. He saw exactly that in young Midoriya and gave him one of the most powerful quirks in the world. One for all. Okay, one for all. Problem. Even after bulking up, trades All Might's Almost signature strong, punches man. for kicks. Uh, but stuff should be working better. now. You ever, you ever seen Rabbit vs. Gun? I have, and I know how it plays out. <laughs> Considering the much higher muscle mass of a human's legs, shoot style allowed Deku to output even more power while giving his arms a break. Uh, a break from... a break. And despite being a classic melee build, Deku can fight at range by punching powerful gusts of air and even precisely aim them with specially designed gloves. Deku has an encyclopedic knowledge of quirks and is always analyzing their strengths and weaknesses mid-battle, even if he does sound a little weird. Despite only barely getting accepted in the first place, Deku quickly became one of Class 1A's most dependable fighters. Because, yeah, somehow these students are constantly getting drafted into literal wars against murderous supervillains. Midoriya's successes in battle against ruthless criminals like Stain, okay. Muscular, and Boring. Overhaul came much to his old bully's chagrin. Where Bakugo was a child prodigy, he now found himself overshadowed by his hard-working rival, and the two would use their mutual respect and animosity to motivate each other to get stronger. Classic frenemies. They're only solving their problems by pounding the living tar out of each other. 
Luckily for him, Deku soon learns that problems by pounding the living tar out of each other. Luckily for him, Deku soon learns that living tar pounding wasn't the only thing he could do. Turns out, One for All did not originate with All Might. It had been passed down eight times until it arrived at Deku, with each yeah, inheritance yeah. also carrying the previous user's natural quirk as well. Like Black Whip, which lets him manifest crazy long and strong energy tendrils to tie enemies up and swing around the city. Or yeah, I know about that. Mouth, I know about that. Just like our girl Froppy. And Danger Sense, which gives him a minor reactive precognition. AKA, he's Spider Man. Not even <laughs> Reese, the mangaka is like the biggest Spidey fan ever. He can also produce a yeah. <laughs> screen to mask his presence, float in midair, or store up kinetic energy over time with Fa Jin. Uh, oh. Yeah. Uh, So something I didn't see too much were like any like numbers. I I saw I I think Daku did really good. Like they did good job analyzing him, except for that. I think he did really good. Like let's see if Asta could do any better. But then I said the same thing for Trunks when I did that reaction video, and then Silver I I just noticed he blew him out of the water with his feet. So anyway, let's do that. All right. My mic should be working. Can you hear me? Mana is the source of all magic, a supernatural energy found in the air and in living beings, except living beings whose names are awesome. So it's kind of a uh, chakra, like Naruto stuff. <laughs> Catchphrase. Ah. <laughs> Time. But Asta had a dream. Despite his lack of magic, he and his about it. Wait, is he 17 and a, he's still but five Asta foot one? A dream. Despite his lack wow. of magic, he and his he's best friend, you know, promised each other one of them would rise to the throne of the greatest military position in the land. The Wizard King. Wizard King? Really, guys? Sometimes they call it Magic Emperor, but we all know what they mean. So he dedicated himself to getting swole as all hell in a world of nerds. He would be its lone jock god, shoving every last wizard into a locker until they crowned him king. But huge frightening pectorals on a tiny screaming goblin child weren't enough on its own. He needed something powerful enough to shut down his opponent's magic. He needed the five leaf clover grimoire. Essentially a book of spells, a grimoire will choose its user and float beside their wielder at all times. And Asta was lucky enough to receive the Una reverse card of grimoires. The five leaf clover can harness the power of anti magic, which will literally nullify the effects of other magic spells, almost like wizard kryptonite. Let the locker stuffing commence! Haha, <laughs> get nerds! It wasn't long before Asta was actually a book of spells. A grimoire will choose its user and float beside their wielder at all times. And Asta was lucky enough to receive the Una reverse card of grimoires. The five leaf clover can harness the power of anti magic, which will literally nullify the effects of other magic spells, almost like wizard kryptonite. Let the luck okay. stuffing commence! Nice. <laughs> get nerds! It wasn't long before Asta was accepted into one of the nine squads of Clover Kingdom's magic knights, the Black Bulls. Filled with lazy drunkards, antisocial otakus, and literal sociopaths. My kind of people! Yep, mostly. But much like with Asta, you shouldn't judge a grimoire by its cover. And soon they were all working together and kicking ass like a family should. Asta harnesses nice. the power of anti-magic by summoning swords imbued with it from the grimoire. Normally, these swords would quickly drain the mana from anyone foolish enough to wield them, but Asta does not have any mana, turning his greatest weakness into a one-of-a-kind strength. He's got his classic Demon Slayer, an enormous greatsword which cuts through spells with its edge and deflects them with its flesh. Or the Demon Dweller, which can also absorb and copy magic, then toss it right back to sender. I think my his classic Demon Slayer. Or the Demon Dweller, which can also absorb and copy magic, then toss it right back to sender. Okay. I think my personal favorite is the more complex Demon Destroyer, which severs the relationship between a spell's cause and effect, countering the effects of its magic. This could result in anything from healing a village that was inflicted with poison to preventing reincarnation. Yeah, okay, oh. some of these can get a little heady. I personally prefer keeping it simple, like using anti-magic telekinesis to surf on your sword through the sky. It's worth noting that these swords are made specifically for countering magical attacks and sources of mana. 
The swords will act as though blunted when striking non-magical foes, more akin to giant clubs than actual blades. Not entirely inconsistent with real-life greatswords. But okay. none of that's even close to as cool as his deadliest sword, the Demon Slasher, a katana as black as the pits of hell and twice as badass. <laughs> this one actually does cut like a sword, but it's complicated. It lets Asta actually select what he does and does not want to cut. One actually does cut like a sword, okay. but it's complicated. It lets Asta actually select what he does and does not want to cut, only affecting his target while leaving anything else unharmed. Okay, at this point, isn't that oh. just magic? Uh, magic with a loophole. And he studied the blade long enough to become a master swordsman to boot. Not in the real life sense, in the anime sense. He can spin himself like a tornado to deflect magic spells, thrust forward at top speed like a charging bull, launch a barrage of anti-magic projectiles, and even channel anti-magic into his swords to vastly increase their size. Oh. Well, while he may be no good with okay. Mana, he has learned to detect key because, of course, the life force existing in all things. Austin like can detect even opponents and even ball. predict their movements ahead of time, as long as he's fast enough to react. With such crazy powers, Asta was taking on threats like the Eye of the Midnight Sun, the Devil Zagrid, and the Dark Triad. So many nerds, never enough lockers. Too bad for Asta, though, he had one serious inner demon. Literally, housed within the Five Leaf Clover Grimoire was. Many nerds, never. Housed within the Five Leaf Clover Grimoire was Liba, a demon exiled from hell for completely lacking magical powers, and who just so happened to get adopted by Asta's mother. Until he got possessed by a different demon and That's killer. not good. Vowing vengeance on all demon kind, Liba manifested anti-magic from his hatred as a way to kick their asses. Which gave him and Asta a lot of common ground, despite the whole, you know, mom murder thing. In fact, the two became true <laughs> brothers and formed an unstoppable duo. Liba can actually fully merge with Asta for a massive power boost that lasts up to five minutes. And so it's like a stand. Okay. Characters earlier, earlier in the series, like Patoli, had magic capable of completely vaporizing the entire Clover Kingdom in a single attack. And demons that Asta has fought since then, like Dante and Lucifero, are leagues stronger. Hell, screw all these demon forms and anti-magic powers. Asta's body is so incredibly well-trained, he dodged a beam of light while sleeping. As in, he was asleep, and the force of his sneeze pushed his head out of the way of a beam of light. Light oh, shit. sneezes, everyone. Despite his headstrong and irritating personality, aka screaming at the top of his lungs as often as possible, <laughs> Asta is an intelligent fighter who has leveraged his skill against far more experienced foes. But he wouldn't be anywhere without the ragtag band of deviants he calls friends. With them at his side, there's no way he won't climb the ranks to take the Wizard King's throne, especially with you know pushing them both to get stronger. Unlike other classic shonen rivalries, this one isn't tainted by antagonism. They truly want what's best for each other, even if they're competing for the same throne. You know who's gonna need all the luck he can get, cause even if Asta never gets mana of his own, his true magic is never given up. Okay, I gotta think about this one. Okay, so I'm probably gonna be wrong for this. I'm probably gonna be wrong, but I'm gonna say Midoriya. This is probably just my bias talking, and I'm, like, so wrong. But they both have so similar speed effects, but Asta's greatest weapon does not work on him. Sure, um, yeah, one of the people blew up a kingdom with their magic. is certainly stronger than Midoriya's island attack, but Asta doesn't have magic. So it doesn't really work. And it does say, like, People he also beat people who are stronger than that, but it's not about how much damage they dish out, it's about how much damage they can take. Oh, they could be like the greatest blast cannon in the world, and we wouldn't even know. So, anyway, let's get into it. I'm probably wrong for saying Midori, but I, I'm saying it anyway. I mean, I got it right last time I tried to do a death bow reaction video, I picked silver. Uh, anyway, get into it. <laughs> It's time for a death battle. All right, come on, Midoriya. 
I don't, I don't think it's working. Yeah, I don't think the uh, you say run music is working. But uh, but let's do this. We run the data through all possibilities. All right, come on, Midoriya. For more trees, gifts, and holiday well, decor, and family back. dollars, helping I you and more. I could have but I really wanted to be here. Zaxby's Crinkle Fries. Oh, I'm flying off the cheese. one. Let, let's see. Hardwood smoked bacon. Buttermilk red. K.O. Ah, uh, poor Deku. He tried his best, but Asta just, uh, shoved him into that great big locker in the sky. Both Deku and Asta were fairly evenly matched melee fighters without any specific abilities to give one an easy edge over the other. Though, to be fair, the variety of quirks Deku inherited from past seasons of One for All did make him more versatile and unpredictable. Plus, quirks are biological mutations not connected to some supernatural energy source like mana, so Asta's anti-magic powers were basically useless here. And Deku was generally a smarter and more tactical fighter, but against Asta's incredible might, this time, Brawn beat Brains. Let's crunch some numbers! Deku's 
greatest feat of strength was splitting that enormous cloud formation with Bakugo. By measuring the size of the island and comparing it to the clouds above, we can determine they dispersed over 63 trillion kilograms of water. That's the weight of the Great Pyramid of Giza. 12,000 of them! And required an energy of nearly 80 teratons of TNT per punch. Let's compare that to Asta. But Tony's spell was going to be strong enough to vaporize a country the size of the Clover Kingdom. We can use this map from the manga to estimate the size of Clover Kingdom to be about 500 kilometers in diameter, about half the length of Great Britain. Vaporizing a country of that size would require an energy of over 480 teratons of TNT, over six times greater than Dex Punch. Well, Asta uses anti-magic. It isn't an automatic counter. It needs to be comparable. Asta was also, also quicker. quicker. Sure, sure, scaling, scaling to Shigaraki, Shigaraki would give Dex roughly, roughly light speed reaction, reaction time. time. But Asta could dodge light in his sleep, and that's his base form, even before transforming with Leva to get way faster. And since Deku and Asta's precognitive abilities more or less matched each other, it was only a matter of time before Asta simply overwhelmed him. Especially since Deku has struggled in the past against faster opponents. Sure, Deku was smarter, but if he literally didn't have enough time to come up with a plan of attack before getting hammered, his brains were wasted. Deku's tactical brilliance and harem scarum tenacity definitely gave his opponent a run for his money. But Asta's raw power, blinding speed, and deadlier weaponry spelled the end for All Might's pupil. Deku gave it his all, and I wish he had won. Asta la vista. The winner is Asta. Hey, if you want more Death Metal ASAP, why not grab a membership? You'll get exclusive emotes, badges, live chat, live streams, and a bunch of behind the scenes stuff. Just click that join button. Thanks for watching. Vegito versus Gogeta. <laughs> that this is gonna be really good. I see why Asta won. It wasn't because he was strong enough to deal that attack. Well, actually, kind of yes. I what they were doing is that they were comparing Asta to that person. Asta, wait, no. they're saying Asta was stronger than that person. Oh, okay, I get it. I get it. I just thought um he couldn't do that attack. Because he had no magic. But maybe that's just with his fists alone. Okay, I see. I really wish Deku won. Come on. I had the jacket and everything. I, I just really want him to win. My, uh, My Hero Academia is like a really good show except for the fandom. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I hope it. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was a longer reaction video. Way longer. 23 minutes. Um longer than the other ones i hope you enjoyed this style of video because we'll be doing it again it'll probably be to end off season one since th apparently it's like december 21st but anyway see you next time